Excuse me. Hi, this is Trey Passer, and welcome to, uh, since it's, it's technically Sunday, but it's, uh, it's my Saturday reviews. And I have uh, two movies here to review for you, and I'll just go through them real quick and uh, give you my impressions of them. Okay, now this first movie is uh, The Truth About Emmanuel. Okay, this movie came out in 2013, a low budget movie. Uh, Stars uh, uh, Kea Scudero, which is this actress right here, who I know from uh, the UK TV series uh, Skins. Okay, she was on that show, or a couple of the series. It was a series in Britain about teenagers that were, you know, basically showed their life and you no know, sex, drugs, and all that other stuff, and growing up and stuff. And it was a real, you know, controversial show because, you know, so a lot of sex and drugs and stuff. And she was really good at it. And uh, also stars Jessica Biel, Alfred Molina, and I believe, uh, what's her name? Uh, 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 Frances O'Connor. Okay, and it's basically a story about a troubled girl named Emmanuel, Kaya, pay, you know, who plays the, the young girl, Kaya. And she, uh, she's... Uh, she grows up with her father and her she lives with her father and her stepfather and her stepmother. Okay, her her mother died giving birth to her, and they even tell the story in the beginning of the movie how as her mother was taking her last breath, she took her first breath. And so, you know, she grew up without a mother and she's kind of a sort of a troubled girl a little bit. She's you know she uh, she doesn't really get along with her stepmother that well, even though her stepmother tries. I guess, and she's always felt that felt that void, that not having her mother there. Okay, and until a mysterious, uh, well, a next door neighbor moves in, uh, played by uh, Jessica Biel. She plays a, a single mother who moves in next door, and her name is Linda, and she uh, becomes obsessed, kind of with, or not obsessed. Well, I guess she does come become somewhat obsessed with. With Linda and her newborn baby and stuff, and she kind of, kind of, you know, at first she starts babysitting her, and she becomes sort of a kind of, you know, she becomes real good friends with her, and she kind of become, you know, she kind of becomes obsessed with her a little bit. Well, not a little bit. She, she does become obsessed with her, and of course, there's a secret between the two of them. Okay, which I don't want to reveal because that's kind of a the twist of the plot, but it's a very well done movie, and I think Kea Scudero, who plays the young girl, she's a uh, really Emmanuel. She's really good. Like I said, you she you feel that you know she has that void in her life with she doesn't have her mother, and she and she kind of resents her stepmother, I guess in a way because she's not her real mother, and and when she this lady Linda moves in, and she becomes like I said, she becomes obsessed with her, preoccupied with her, and she babysits and spends a lot of time with her. And you know, like I said, there's a there's a twist along along with their relationship. And the stepmother notices, you know, how close she becomes with, with the next door neighbor. And of course it troubles her. And of course it troubles the father as well, played by Alfred Molino. And it's a really good movie. I like the whole atmosphere of the movie. And it's written and directed by Francesca Good Garina. She does this. Yeah. And so like I said it's a good story. It's a, it's not yeah, you know, the twist in the story is uh, is okay, but it, it's well acted by uh, Jessica Biel and Kea Scudero. They have a nice chemistry between the two of them, and 
But when the story, when the a secret that's between them comes exposed, okay, and then it kind of goes off into a different direction. But it's a, a really, yeah, it's a decent movie, and I would, you know, I would give it a, uh, I would give it a seven, a seven out of ten. I think it's well done, and like I said, good chemistry between the two actors and stuff, and and you can kind of see why the Emmanuel character becomes obsessed with with the Linda character, and then when their secret is exposed, what happens after that, okay, and I think it's well done, so I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Definitely uh, worth a, a look, just to see if, okay, very well acted by the uh, the two main actresses in this, Jessica Biel and K. Escudero, okay, so definitely worth checking out. Okay, so that's that one. Now, this next movie uh, is uh, the 47 Ronin, Okay, now this movie uh, came out during Christmas time, around that time, Christmas time. You know, around the same time around the, the Wolf of Wall Street and everything else. And they had a budget of like hundreds, excuse me, seventy-five million dollars, which is, you know, which is incredible. <laughs> okay, and uh, it's basically the story. It stars Keanu Reeves. He's like the main, you know, excuse me, the main actor in this. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, and the story, the story basically is uh, about the Forty Seven Ronin. Okay, and it's it's began about Ken O'Ree's character. His name is Kaya, and he's a uh, what they call a half breed. <laughs> and he gets uh, found in the forest. You know, uh, basically running away from something. Half like half dead, and he gets found by Lord Asenio of of Aiko in a samurai. They they they, you know, they kind of adopt him. You know, he's a half breed, so he gets treated, of course, you know, like he's uh, basically like he's dirt. <laughs> but uh, but of course he uh, he grows up with them. Yeah, and of course the daughter <laughs> of. Uh, but Lord Asano, uh kind of, she kind of, you know, they grew up together. He kind, she kind of, and they kind of, you know, fall in love, <laughs> as it were. But even though, like I say, he's Kaya, as played by kind of reasons like Loki. He's, he's a half breed. He's treated like dirt basically, <laughs> and he really can't, you know, be a samurai or anything else. And he basically stays in the background and stuff. You know, like I said, just being grateful that. Lord Asano, uh, you know, took him in and adopted him, basically. And what happens is, uh, it, it's, it's, it takes place, uh, I think it's supposed to be in, it's, yeah, Samurai, uh, this, you know, this man of Samurai that Lord Asano you know, rules over, you know, they're having a visit from the local uh, shogun who keeps the peace between the different, different factions. Okay, and during his visit, of course, uh, one of the local uh, tribesmen, <laughs> who basically is scheming for power, and has a witch in his employ, <laughs> basically uh, bewitches Lord Asano and makes him attack, makes him attack the, the local warlord, and of course, then yeah, he's bewitched. And only like Kaya, can, who could actually see, you know that. The witch in her, in her, in her, uh, in her wolf-like form, he can tell what she looks like, and nobody really believes him. <laughs> but Lord Asno gets since he attacked the warlord, he was bewitched by the witch. He gets the local shogun sentences him to death to restore honor to his, you know, to his tribe, or to his, uh, to his little village that he has to uh, basically commit suicide as a point of honor. To, to you know to have his transgression you know uh, overlooked so he has to but of course the local uh, uh, you know the second in command for the village uh, he knows that his, his master was bewitched okay but of course he can't do anything <laughs> of course and even at the local uh, Lord Asano commits you know I guess the Harry Carry and commits it basically kills himself in front of everybody <laughs> He has to, uh, 
the, the local shogun tells you know the second in command that you can't you and your men cannot seek revenge okay your war your uh, your vassalous uh samurai now so you're called ronin now instead of a samurai you're ronin because you have no master anymore and of course the daughter has to you know to link the uh peace complete the peace the local the lord Aslo's daughter has to marry the the you know the local tribesman that was attacked <laughs> You know, to keep the peace. Of course, uh, the second in command is banished. You know, I know he's locked up in jail for a year. Uh, Kaya is sold off. Kano Reeves' character is sold off into slavery. Okay, and in a year's time, after the year's mourning period, the, the daughter, who's really in love with Kaya, uh, Mika, she has to marry the local warlord, okay, who has the witch under his control, okay. And that's the basic premise of the movie. After a year's time, uh, the second in command is set free, and he basically uh, gathers his own men. He goes looking for Kaya, okay, and basically finds him, you know, like I said, being exploited, you know, because he's been sold off, and he basically has to battle all these demons that they call him half breed, of course, and they bet on him in fights, and he's getting rescued by the second command, and they go back and gather all the event, men together. And they have basically the rest of the movie is them having to challenge this local warlord and his witch to try to retain their master's honor, okay, to you know, re you know, to try to regain their master's honor. Now this movie, uh, like I said, it wasn't bad. Actually, it was quite entertaining. It's not as bad as people made it out to be. I mean, so you know, you know, it's not the best movie. It's totally predictable, of course. And Kano Ree's character Kaya has a kind of a secret, which kind of gets us. Which they kind of dip into a little bit, okay. Especially when they go looking for uh, swords and stuff to uh, challenge this local warlord. They have to fight and stuff, and so they have to, you know, they have to gather together and get, you know, get a, get swords and plan on how to basically attack this local warlord to regain their master's honor. And I thought Kano Reeves is okay in this part, and and the lead uh, actor too, who played the second in command. I thought he was decent as well, and and like I said, it's totally predictable, you know that. The, you know that the the daughter that the daughter would be in love with the young half breed, okay, and of course you know, and of course Ken Reeves' character, you know, he's humble and he can't, you know, he knows his place and he can't really challenge anything because he's a half breed, okay, living with the master and, that, and all the men kind of disrespect him because he's half breed, okay, and of course he has to, you know, regain the honor and stuff and and kind of you know, I guess get respect. You know, get you know respect from the men who basically dismiss him because he's a half breed. And I thought it was a decent movie and a nice watch. And I would give it a uh, a seven. It's, it's decent. It's not the best movie. Like I said, it's totally predictable. Okay, it has a little comedic elements in it, but it's mostly straightforward action and stuff. And I thought the actors did a good job in it. And I think Keanu Reeves did a decent job in this movie as well. I mean, he was nice and his character was nice and humble and. Not you know looking to take advantage despite the crappy way people treated him and stuff and I thought it was decent and I like that I could buy the uh, the uh, excuse me <laughs> and I could buy the kind of love story thing with him and the and the, and the master's look the, the master's daughter who kind of you know was in love with him and stuff and he was I liked the, I liked his character Kaya he was he was decent to me so I would give Forty Seven Road a seven out of ten like I said it's not the best it's totally predictable. But I don't know, 180 million. I don't know how what they spent this movie on, how, what they spent that money on, because uh, you know, I see, you know, I don't see two. I mean, they got some nice special effects and stuff in there, but 180 million dollars worth. Uh, I have no idea where that that money went. <laughs> okay, in terms of that, I mean, there's some uh, some special effects in there, but I don't think 180 million dollars worth. Okay, and like I said, it's not that epic a movie. I mean, it's like a little bit under two hours, I think, but it's not. I don't know where the hundred eighty million dollars went <laughs> uh, to this movie. And like I said, it's predict totally predictable all this stuff. And and plus, I think at the time, I think Wolf of Wall Street came out and, and the Hobbit movie and stuff. So this movie kind of got swallowed up with that. But again, hundred eighty million dollars. I don't know where that money went. <laughs> okay, that's it, you know, because like I said, Keanu Reeves, I think, was the most recognizable actor in this movie. And I know his salary probably wasn't that much, but. I don't know, maybe they built original sets and all that stuff, but still, $180 million for this? 
yeah, somebody it deserves to be fired for spending that much money. I think this movie probably could have been made for uh, less than a hundred million dollars. I think because there's nothing spectacular besides the you know special effects shot. But there's nothing else that I think that I could see. Well, okay, yeah, they spent like eighty million dollars on special effects or something. But anyway, I give it a forty-seven out of it has a seven out of ten. It's a decent action movie. It's, it's like I said, it's totally predictable. But I think like I said I like Keanu Reeves. Uh, uh, portrayal of this and the lead, the second in command act, you know, the uh, the Ronin guy, I forgot his name, I'm going to remember his name, the guy who plays like the second in command who basically gathers all the Ronin together and, and goes to rescue Kai to, you know, challenge the local warlord who uh, betrayed him with the, uh, betrayed his master. Uh, what's his name? Uh, I think his name is Hiroki Sanada. I think that's his name. But yeah, I think he was good. And, and Koi Shabaska, who played Mika, the love interest, uh, I thought she was, uh, wait, hold on a minute. Maybe I'm getting that right. No, no, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, those, I'm right about that. Yeah, those are the actors that played those parts. And I thought they were decent. Like I said, like I said Ken Reeves, I think he was good. I don't know people give him crap, but I thought he was really, uh, the decent in this movie is Kai, the, you know, the half breed. Okay? And again, uh, the truth about Emmanuel, uh, I give this a 7 out of 10, again. Nothing earth shattering in this movie. And, uh, I like the chemistry between Jessica Biel and the, the actress, the young actress who plays Emmanuel. I thought they were really good. They had a nice chemistry. And like I said, they, there's a secret that they share, kind of the secret. And, and, and once it's revealed, at least to something else. And I think it's a decent movie. It's worth totally entertaining and totally worth watching. Again, seven out of ten for this as well. Okay, let me if you see those two movies, let me know what you think. Feel free to leave comments down below. But this is Trade Pastor saying so long and take care.